Hey, joining us right now to talk about the latest rate messaging from Fed members, the economy, and how all of this could play into November's election is Evercore founder and senior chairman Roger Altman. Roger, good morning. Hey, Can Becky. I ask, were you listening to the last conversation we just had? I was. Okay, maybe we can start with that and just kind of pick up, because it can be confusing, a lot of different numbers that are out there, but the Wall Street Journal has a really interesting op-ed today, or um, opinion piece. I read that. Okay, you did. So the, the numbers that I think are so key here is they point out that revenue is expected to total 17.2% of GDP this year. That is unchanged. However, outlays, outlays for... Uh, spending have hit 24.2 percent of GDP, and they average 24 percent over the next decade, and that is a huge increase in the CBO's projections. Is that a problem? Becky, what, what is not, though, mentioned in that op-ed or the opinion piece is that over the very long term, revenues have averaged 19 to 20 percent of GDP. Yes, in recent years, they're lower at the 17 percent level, but that historically, they're two or three uh, 100 basis points higher. The only solution to this is going to involve both sides of the equation, spending and revenues. And I wish there were, uh, there was political will uh, to take this on, but there isn't at the moment. And so you say to yourself, what will produce a solution? And the answer, unfortunately, may be a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that before. Uh, but a real solution here requires both spending restraint and getting revenues back to the very long-term historical average, not just one side. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that happening. Go ahead. But, you know, Roger, they, the, the, the chart is right there. It, it, when it was 19 a couple of times, but since 1975, it looks like the average is nowhere near 19 percent. It's... It's right in the, the. How long is the average that you're talking about when it was 19 percent? That that only happened. Well, I I just recall uh, that when I was serving in the Clinton administration, um, and the, uh, well, uh, economic, the President Clinton, Clinton's I economic plan was being negotiated. Yeah, but, uh, but the that was long, a... long term historical averages that we were looking at at that time were in the 19 to 20 percent range. Makes sense. That would have been in the 90s. But in any so event, Joe. In any event. In any event. There's, yeah. there's no solution here that doesn't involve both sides of the equation. I, I, I think only, uh, I think it'd be very unrealistic to think you're going to solve it all, given the size of the problem, on just one side. But it is true, as the journal uh, editorial page says, the idea of a 7% deficit, as you said a few minutes ago, Joe, on, with a different interview, 7% deficit in an economy this strong um, is... Uh, dangerous. Uh, and we have to fix that. And uh, it, 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 it's trite to say perhaps that it's unsustainable, but it is unsustainable. And if, if it's not proactively fixed, then I think market forces ultimately will force it to be fixed. And that will be ugly, but it will be fixed. Do you ever worry that, that we could harm the innovation and the entrepreneurship and everything else? Because if 24 percent instead of 20 percent is going into uh, government spending, the growth you need to generate that organic um, you know, revenue increase is, is not going to be there. It, it's just, I don't know if Democrats ever think about the offset for, for taking money out of the private sector and what that means for long-term growth, Roger. Well, I agree with you largely on that. Um, one of the phenomena we always see, uh, especially with fiscal policy, but you see it with other things, is that markets seem to ignore it for a very long time until they don't. And I've just seen this dynamic many times over the years I've been working. And I think that's what's going to happen here. Uh, at some point, and it may not be decades away, markets going to wake up and they're going to dislike this, and uh, it's going to dramatically affect Treasury financing and other things. Um, it would be good to solve this in a negotiated, proactive way before that, but there doesn't seem to be the will to do that. 
but I, I, I'm one who thinks it will be solved. It just may not be solved the easy way. Uh, Roger, when you say it's not decades away, I mean, I, I guess you're, you're talking about basically buyers refusing to show up to, to purchase treasuries, uh, the U.S. debt. Um, could it be less than a couple of years away? It's always possible, of course, Becky. But right now, you have the best of all worlds in the financial market environment, as you've been discussing this morning. Um, all major equity indices at all-time highs, big rally in the fixed income markets in recent days, VIX at 1250, uh, inflation coming down, headed right toward the Fed's long-term target, the economy growing at about 2.7 percent, despite the slowing we're seeing uh, in terms of retail sales and uh, certain consumer products slowing and labor market softening. Uh, so it's a very, very good environment, a Goldilocks environment for markets. Until that changes, I just think logic suggests that markets may not focus on this. But of course, it will change. Uh, I mean, we're we're seeing give or take 2.7 percent growth four years after this recovery started, almost exactly four years. That's amazing. And by the way, not many people seem to focus on that when they try to figure out why markets are this high. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's it's the only economy in the world that's remotely, uh, at least advanced economy, doing that. And it's a, quite a tribute to the U.S. economy and, and the private sector. But I don't think this is going to be addressed until we see a less buoyant financial market environment, which would require uh, a recessionary environment environment or the prospect of one.